a few months ago now I created this video of the blender wave with dupliverts and I had some questions about some of the techniques used so I thought it'd be a good place to start with making tutorials and this is the finished result that we'll be hoping to create at the end of the tutorial. The topics we'll be covering are dupliverts, indirect lighting, using the wave modifier and animating colour. So if that sounds like something you want to do then carry on watching. So I've just loaded up the default blend file. We've got a default cube and we are going to need that but not quite yet so I'll just press H to hide it and you'll notice I've got a little uh, screencast key so you can see what I'm pressing if you're unsure of some of the shortcuts or if I forget to explain some of them. So we're just going to top view, shift A, add mesh, plane. Now what we're actually going to be doing is creating the template for the size of the wave. So we're actually going to create that template using a plane and using arrays. So I'm just going to go over to the modifier panel and add the first array. And we are controlling the length with this one. So I'm just going to set this to 60. So it's quite long. It's going way off the grid. So I'm just going to move it along and then scale it down so it just fits on the grid. And this is just for a bit of usability really. It's easier once things are on the grid and you have a size of or a reference for how big things are. That's the length sorted. We'll then minimize that, add another array, and this will control the width. So instead of the x being 1, the x will be 0, and the y will be 1. And now it is traveling along the y axis. And we're going to set this to about 6. We're going to add the final and third array which controls the height. Now we can't actually use relative offset for this one and I presume that's because it doesn't actually have any height. I mean the plane is completely flat so it, it can't offset from something so we're going to use the constant offset and that'll work fine. And I'm just going to set the Z to 1 and you'll see it's actually raised up as it should. And I'm going to set that to be the same as the width which was 6. Now I'm just going to go into side view and then into edit mode and just enable this button here which will say pretends that the modifiers have been applied so we can see their effect in edit mode. And what we really want is um, height between the rows to be the same as the width of one plane and at the moment it's a bit squashed. So I'm just going to increase the Z amount, hold shift to uh, have a slightly more precise control of it. And you see this is far more square now and that's that's what we want because what we're actually going to be doing, which is the next stage, is we're going to be telling it to create a cube at every vertice of this object. And we're going to do that using an option in the object tab called duplication. And we're going to click verts and it's commonly called dupliverts. So if you hear dupliverts it just means we're using duplication with vertices option. Now there wasn't actually any change and there was no real prompt of what you have to do. But we're going to bring our cube back with Alt H, select it, move it over and scale it down a bit. Now what we're then going to do is parent this cube to our template of the wave. And that's because duplication works by looking on this object, on the object we want the duplication to appear, for a child. So we're going to left click the cube, shift select the template and do control P, set parent to object. Now what you'll have noticed is that something has happened to the cube and I'm not quite sure why this happens but all I know is that it's because we have the array modifiers on this um, plane. And so it, for some reason, I don't know why it doesn't like it, so we're going to apply the modifiers. But what we also want to do, we want to turn on merge. And that's because if we don't put merge on, then we're going to end up with a lot of duplicate vertices. And when we tell the duplication to work, it's going to place two cubes in the place of where one vertice should be. Now, that'll be a bit clearer when I actually put duplication on. So just trust me for the minute you need merge on. So put merge on, apply, open this one and you'll see that change and you'll notice it change as we do the other one. So merge, apply, final one, merge and then apply. 
and you'll see the cube is actually copying the shape of this template object and placing a copy of itself at every vertice of this original object. But it's not quite in the right place, or it'll look better if it's just overlapped fully. So I'm just going to select this original object, Shift S, cursor to selected, and the cursor has gone to the origin of that original plane. And then we're going to select this object, Shift S, selection to cursor and it's moved the entire duplication over. Now we can't really see what's going on because the cube is too big. So with it selected, I'm just going to scale it down. And there you can see the the uh, the effect we want. And so what it has done is place a copy of itself at every vertice of that template object. So when we were setting the length that's why. And if you wanted a shorter wave, you had less vertices. You can remove them now, but you have to do it a bit more manually because we had to apply the modifiers. And that is a bit annoying, but it's just one of those things. Now that that's set up, we're actually going to disable it for the minute just because it can be a bit difficult to set the other things up with all these other cubes in the way. So I'll turn that off for the minute. And the next stage is to add the wave part and we're going to use that using the wave modifier. Now there are lots of properties here but if I just press Alt A to start playing you'll you should immediately see the effect of the wave modifier and you see it's actually creating ripples from the origin point. Now one of the first options we're going to do we're going to turn off Y motion. We only want the wave going along and we don't want it to ripple outwards along this direction. So I've put it back on it's affecting both the Y and the X. We only want the X and now it's going along, albeit at a rather slow and jerky pace. So what settings do we need to change? Well, the speed is actually fine. The height, we're going to change to 0 0.7. The width is going to be 5. And narrow is going to be 0 0.4. And you'll see the changes, it's become a lot slower, the waves are a bit wider. These settings will produce the effect we need, but if you're looking for a different effect, it may be a bit troublesome, but it didn't take too long, just play around with the values. But what we're actually going to do, for a bit more control, is we're going to scale this um, template object down. Now, if we go over to the object panel, and just go up to the transform, you'll see that the scale is actually at 0 0.1. And that means the wave modifier is not going to affect it properly because it still thinks it's full size, when in fact we have scaled it down. So what we need to do is apply the scale. So we're going to go Control A to bring up the Apply menu, Scale, and suddenly the waves have got huge because it's realised that, oh, you, you meant this scale. But it was seeing the 0 0.1 scale and not properly applying it. So... It still isn't quite what I want. It's it's close, but we can have even more control by scaling it down further. So I'll scale it down, and then that's not at one, so I know the wave modifier is not going to be applied properly. So press Control A again and apply the scale, and we've got even bigger waves. And you can carry on doing this if you if you want, but I think this is good enough. So. This is where we combine the first step of all the duplication with the wave modifier. And all we have to do is turn duplication back on. And because the original template object has been distorted by the wave modifier, all the cubes which have been told to follow those verts will also, well, they'll continue to follow. So if we play it, and it may become a tad slow because having to do a bit of work, you can see it's creating really nice wave motion and all those cubes are, are following it. So if you only watch this tutorial for that effect, then you're pretty much done. And But for those that want a bit more of a tutorial on the colour, that's what I'm going to do next. The material that we want to change will be the material that's on the cube because when we render, the only thing that's going to appear are these duplicated cubes. So you haven't got to worry about that original plane appearing just going to go into the camera view and set up a quick and rough render. Just press F12 to render. 
and you'll well you just trust me there's there's no plane in there these are just the cubes appearing and so the only material we have to worry about is the material on this cube and you just make sure that you are doing the right material so what do we need to change well I had a slight rainbow effect going on so if I go back to frame one and I'm just going to set this to red and now what I'm going to do is keyframe the color and some of you may not be aware that you can actually do this but it's the same with most of the other properties that if you want to keyframe it you put your cursor over the property press I and there we have the lightish green or yellowish border showing that it is a keyframe property if we move to frame 50 it has now gone the green you would expect because it, although it's a keyframe property it doesn't have a keyframe on this frame and it's detected that it's changed we'll then change it to a nice well horrible pink press I to insert another keyframe and we're just going to continue doing this around these colors around the border of the color wheel so I'll do blue I for keyframe go along 50 frames choose a green keyframe that and just continue around all the colors and of course you can choose any colors and I just chose the rainbow because it demonstrates the uh, effect quite nicely and then on frame 250 we're gonna go back to red and keyframe that so it'll have some kind of looping so if we play this you'll see that steadily it changes color and that's because blender like with all the other properties will interpolate between the frames or the keyframes you've made and create all the properties in between so it is effectively animating the color but if we were to render that and i'm not going to bother because i know it'll look rubbish there's still some things we need to change about this, this material and this comes into the last part of the tutorial which covers briefly indirect lighting now this property says allow other objects to light up other objects if we hover over it, it says add indirect light bouncing of surrounding objects which basically means if you set an object to emit light then it will be able to act as a light and this isn't something that's normally possible but as soon as you turn indirect lighting on it is but it has the slight message only works with approximate gather method and that's the gather here and it's set to ray trace which is the best quality and for some reason I don't know why and it is fairly annoying it will only work with approximate gather method and as soon as I click approximate the message goes away and the properties will become enabled again if I render it's slower but we're not actually seeing any change and that's because what I said about the material I said if the object is emitting light it will light up other objects and we haven't actually set it to emit light yet so this is another very simple property on the material the emit property and very simply I'm gonna set this to one it's got a hell of a lot brighter and if I render that the objects are now lighting up each other now I'm gonna cancel the render because there are a few other settings firstly indirect lighting works best in the darkest settings so I'm gonna set the scene to be a black background I'm also going to add in a plane and that's because it'd be nice if we could see what light is being cast and if we put a plane there it'll cast light onto it and we can see the effect a lot better so I'm just using the basic grab controls to make sure that's quite close to where the bottom of the wave gets we don't actually need to set any material on this that'll work fine without it and we don't need our original light to see the full effect of indirect lighting it's best if we just use those objects to light the scene so we don't need this original light so I'm just gonna delete that and if I re-render now we see the effect fully now of course this well to me this looks too bright you know we're, we're lighting up a huge distance here it's a, it's a really nice effect but we can control it a bit further and that is the fall off option and I'm just going to set this to let's test it with two and what this does is say 
I want you to fade out as you get further away from the object, fade out the light, but do it far more quickly than it would with fall off turned off. And you can see it's it's giving slightly more realistic effect, even though this obviously isn't a real object. And you can see where it's close to the plane, it's given more intense light, and where it's further away, it's slightly more faint. And we can actually turn that up to just fine tune it. And there we have it. And that's pretty much the final effect. But if I just find a different colour to prove that it's working, I render that and we've got a nice Tron looking glow there. And that that basically is the final effect and all you'd have to do then is render out an animation and uh, set an output path for the files and there you have it and that's that's basically what I did. So I hope that's hoped some people, obviously I, I don't think many people will be wanting to create this exact effect but some of the techniques in it are quite useful such as using duplicates or animating colour or the indirect lighting and if you like it please say so in the comments and if you think I could improve on something, please also say that. This is my first tutorial, so be gentle. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.